What's up guys, this video we're gonna be putting the engine back together um, after filling it with epoxy on both the inside and outside to try and stop those leaks that the ARP studs cause. So we gotta slap the head on, put the cams in, tie it back up, put the oil pan on and just reseal everything. So let's get right into it. So we're working on getting the new head bolt set up. Again, big shout out to Joe for hooking me up with, uh, you know, the idea to use these. These are Volkswagen TDI bolts. Uh, PD, they're for a PD-150 head. You can uh, find them on the internet pretty easily and find the part number. But basically, they're a little bit too long um, for the white blocks. The white blocks use 157 millimeter bolts. And I think these are 166 or something like that. So basically what I elected to do, um, or well, what Joe uh, told me to do is use the ARP washer. It's three millimeters thick. And then basically with the ARP washer on, cut the length from here to the end to about 155 to 157. I went with 155. I want it to go a little bit shorter uh, to give myself a little bit higher tolerance. But as you can see, it's basically perfectly on at 155. And if you count the threads, um, let's see, one, one, it's kind of hard to see. One, two, three, four. You want to cut between threads three and four, and that'll give you the perfect length. And then use the ARP washers. And then again, we're going to use the Volkswagen spec for these. And these are grade 12.9 bolts. The Volvo are 10.9, so these should be a lot stronger. And you have to use a special uh, triple square socket which I picked up and I will uh, show that when I do the torquing process. I got all the bolts cut down. Again, if you cut between two threads, threads three and four, it's gonna cut a lot cleaner and you're gonna have a lot easier time cleaning it up. Most of them I didn't really have to clean up too much. Um, what I would do is just chase it with a nut. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. You can see the nut just goes on so easily. And then I would also test fit it in the block. And you can see it goes in by hand, no problem. It doesn't bind up, doesn't get snagged. Just make sure to remove any sharp edges with a file. Or you can see it, it, it cuts pretty clean if you use a, um, a grinder with the cutoff wheel. Come on, focus, focus. There you go. You can see it, it cuts pretty clean. And then just chase it with a nut, and that's gonna cut off any of those sharp edges. So these are all cut to 155 millimeters with the measured with the washer on, and these are ready to go. I also got the cylinder head cleaned up. It took me hours to get this thing cleaned up. I'm very meticulous with the mating surface between the uh, head and the, uh, the cam cover. So it takes me a really long time to get all of the old sealant off. And usually what I do is I use a razor blade and then I use some sort of um, like sanding wheel to get the rest of it off. But if you do use a sanding wheel, you really got to clean this thing out because um, it's very easy to get dirt down in here and in between the springs. So usually when I do the sanding wheel, I'll do it with the lifters in to stop anything from getting down here. And then I'll pull those lifters out and I'll just hit it with a ton of degreaser, clean all the inside with just uh, warm water and degreaser and then make sure it dries out. And then also make sure you get these oiled ASAP, the springs, the retainers, um, and the, uh, the, the valve seals down there. Because if you don't, they might dry out and you might have problems. But I got this very, very well cleaned. And mating surface on the bottom. I also got cleaned up very well. So you can see, I did use that copper spray before and it comes off so easily just to use uh, brake clean and it comes right off. Um, I also cleaned out the intake ports a little bit, but not a whole lot, but this thing's ready to go on. The block's filled, block surface is also clean and I'll make sure to hit it all with brake clean before I actually put it all back together to make sure everything's perfectly clean. I do, I got all my engine parts in. So you can see the head gasket peeking out. I got all new cam seals. I got everything, basically all new gasket seals. I, I don't reuse, I don't like to reuse stuff. So I got OEM, NLS gasket. This is the best gasket you can get. 3063, 7066. Don't get a Victor Renz, don't get any knockoff. Just get the OEM Bobo head gasket and you will never have issues. Um, and I like to copper spray mine. 
The only reason I copper spray mine is because my block is step decked. So that means the sleeves actually protrude three thousandths above the deck. So the only reason I copper spray it is just to guarantee that I get a good seal on the coolant uh, side of things. The cylinder is always going to seal no matter what because it's raised up above. But since the head actually has to like, you know, bend down three thousandths of an inch to seal um, with, with the, the, the deck and everything, I like to use that copper spray to guarantee I get a seal. I used to actually run a little bead of silicone all the way around, but I found that unnecessary and just more cleanup and a uh, hassle when you have to take things apart. So I got to get more copper spray. I'm going to run, um, grab some of that. And I also have the bit for this and I will show that in the next clip. So here's the special bit you have to buy. It's an M12 XZN. Some people call them triple square and of course half drive and it's CP30036 Capri. You want to make sure you get a high quality one of these bits because you really don't want to break this. Um, while you're torquing those those bolts. So if you pull her out, see it's half inch drive, of course. Three quarter is not gonna work. Or three eighths, I mean. And, uh, see that fits in there perfectly. And hopefully, yep, plenty of room in the uh, head bolt hole too. So we'll use a real short half inch extension with this. I don't know where I put my short half inch extension. If it's around here somewhere, we'll use that. And then we're gonna torque them once. And then there's two angle torque sequences. And we'll get more into that when we get to the actual torquing. I got the block flipped upside down. I cleaned out all of the head bolt holes two or three times with brake clean. And I'm gonna flip it back around once I know they're dry. And I'm gonna clean the deck. And I'm also gonna clean out these oil drainage channels. I have a special, it's like a fish tank cleaner kind of deal. And basically just run these through with brake clean, get out any dirt. And the head should be perfectly clean, so I'm not gonna worry about doing that, but um, definitely wanna get the channels clean because once this head's on, don't worry, I'm gonna clean that before I actually use it. But once the head's on, it's kind of hard to clean those channels from this side. So we're going to do that and get this thing all cleaned up and ready, get ready to torque the head on. Getting ready to torque the head on the block. Put the block over here. I have the cylinders all oiled down. I have the deck all cleaned. I have all the oil galleys completely clean. Everything is covered until we are ready to torque the head. We have the head numbered for how we're going to torque it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We also got um, the torque, uh, torque sheet here. We're going to do 40 newton meters, 60 newton meters, and then 90 degrees and 90 degrees. And we'll mark it off with dots as we go so we don't lose track of things. We got our bolts here. They're cleaned up. We're going to be dipping them in just motor oil and then uh, wiping them off. So they're going to be nice and lubed up. And we're going to be lubing up the washers with motor oil as well. We're going to be using motor oil since these are torque yield bolts. You don't need to use any sort of special ARP fastener uh, lube or anything like that. Just keep it nice and basic. We got our head gasket. Um, had to drill out some holes when you use a MLS gasket with the end head on a RN uh, block. And we're also going to copper spray that. So we'll get that sprayed. And then we can torque this in together and we're going to do one final cleanup of the uh, mating surface on the head with some brake clean and make sure that is perfectly clean. And we can drop the head on and start torquing it. And I'm going to do a time lapse because it's going to be interesting. 90 degrees and then an additional 90 is a lot. Favo is 40, 60, and then 130. So this is almost another, what, uh, 6, 30, 40 degrees or whatever. Uh, 50 degrees? Yeah, 50 degrees. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of torque. But hopefully these puppies hold and hopefully we don't crack the block anymore. And I don't know, I guess we'll see what happens.
All right, we got the head on. We did 40 newton meters, 60 newton meters, and then two sets of 90 degrees. And it, I mean, it wasn't easy, but it really wasn't that hard. And they, the bolts went smooth. I dipped them in oil, literally dipped them in oil. And there was no creaking. It was just smooth as can be. I didn't hear anything crack or pop. So I don't think the epoxy inside cracked or anything. I don't think any of the bolt holes cracked. It, it was really smooth. Everything went really smooth. So fingers crossed this works out. And um, I don't know, let's just hope it works out. We got new sealant for the top. I bought the official Vavo tool to clamp down the cover because I think the method I was doing before where I would use the bolts to clamp down the cover, I think that ends up stripping a lot of the holes. So we're gonna try the official Vavo tool this time and we're gonna do that next. Our oil pan is pretty much cleaned out. I bought a new oil pan o-ring kit. So we're gonna get this pipe new sealed. I also bought a new air release valve that I'm probably gonna transfer over to this pan. And other than that, we bought new oil coolers uh, o-rings. Um, everything on that is good to go. So we can put that on. I might call it quits for today. This was a big job and it was very stressful, but nothing cracked, nothing popped. So I'm pretty happy and we're gonna keep chugging along. We should be able to get this engine together pretty quickly because we have every single part we need. So let's get to it. Another A degree wheel for the white block engines. I ordered a standard uh, six and a half inch degree wheel. And basically I just whipped up this quick drawing in CAD and it's basically uh, 79 millimeters between bolt holes uh, for the crank pulley. Uh, the crank sprocket so basically going to center that mark my holes uh, and then once those holes are marked i can actually drill out the center with a, a hole saw so that way i'll be able to spin the uh, nut still pretty easy process going to get that done real quick and figured i'd show this to the guys who have aftermarket cams that have to time them using true top dead center so real easy way to do this and should make things a lot more accurate than how i was doing it before Three wheel on the spacing was a little bit off than what i initially had it's actually about 71 degree or 71 millimeters from here to here so i got the center drilled out i got two holes it's uh nice and solidly mounted i'm not going to do the other four twos enough and um the next thing i'm going to do is find true top dead center using a piston stop and i will show that process so this is a piston stop you can get this pretty much anywhere amazon summit jags Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna screw it into the cylinder that we wanna find top dead center on. In this case, we're gonna do cylinder one and cylinder three. We're gonna use cylinder one. Actually, no, we're just gonna do cylinder three actually, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna use cylinder three to actually time the cams because the valve cover oil filler caps are here. So we can get dial gauge, dial gauge indicator in here. And we can also use the cylinder to check ignition timing. We'll just attach the light to um, the uh, cylinder three wire. So we're gonna put that in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the engine forwards until um, it hits the piston stop. We're going to record what uh, angle it's at, and then we're going to rotate it the other way and record what angle it's at. And then uh, the angle in between those two is true top dead center. So we're going to do that real quick. And then after that's done, we'll probably also like mark it on the pulley for, for future reference. So the engine rotated all the way forward. It's hitting on the piston stop. And if you look, you can see it's just about at 49 degrees is where it lines up with this gold mark. Some people use like a coat hanger. I'm just gonna use this mark because I already have it marked and this is what I usually use um, when the engine's in the car to line it up with the crank pulley for the mark I make. So now we're gonna rotate it this way and it's gonna stop at another angle and then we're gonna subtract those two and split the difference and that should be true top dead center. So I made the two marks. I use this little piece here to make sure it's perfectly straight like that. And so what we had was uh, 56 total degrees between here and here. So if we split that, that's 28 and 28 degrees from this mark is right here. And you can see that is perfectly in between those two. So now we're gonna take the piston stop out and we're gonna rotate it to this mark and that's gonna be our true top dead center. So we got it rotated to this mark. You can see it is perfectly lined up. And if we take a peek in the cylinder, you can see the cylinder, the piston is all the way at the top. So we now found a true top dead center on cylinder three. And again, we're gonna use that to set the cam timing and also check the uh, ignition timing. So 
Probably gonna take this wheel off. We'll make the official mark on the cam pulley and we'll be good to go. Mark I made and it is spot, pretty much spot on to my new mark. You can see it's a little bit off. So my old mark was a little bit, probably two or three degrees to, uh, I guess, advanced. Um, so I'm gonna do the process again. I'm gonna double check it and then we'll erase all these marks and we'll put in our new ones. I don't know, maybe this is a coincidence, but there's this little guy right here. See that little like slit right there? Yeah, that lines up perfectly with this in the cover right here. So I wonder if that's like Volvo's true top dead center cylinder three marking. It's kind of hard to tell from the video, but if you line it up, you can see it's pretty, pretty close. Focus, yeah. You can see it's pretty close. I don't know, I'm gonna check it one more time. Basically, I'm making sure the top of this is lined up with the top of this and also lines up with the top of this mark that I made. I'm gonna check it one more time and um, make sure it's good. Also, at some point, some people have been asking me how to do the dual oil cap filler um, mod. Basically, you get an old valve cover um, and you pop a filler, the filler neck out this way, pop it out that way, and then basically press it back in this way. I'm replacing this front one because the ceiling surface got messed up and it's always leaking. So you can see I used the press and I just pressed it down in. And if you look under here, you can see it's nice and pressed in now. And of course, make sure to use the pink sealant because you don't want it leaking because that will be no fun. So now this should be good in terms of... Um, you know, the cap sealing to the neck because the old one, this mating surface got all messed up and it was always leaking. No matter how many new seals I had put on it, I would even silicone it and it would leak and it just must have been really damaged. So I got a good one. You can't buy them new from Volvo. You got to get a donor valve cover and uh, it's really easy to do. Poles, you're messing up because this is all the dirt, grease, and grime that came off those bolts from just soaking in here. And if you look at them, like, look at the gunk that's in those threads. That's an easy way to strip bolt holes. I did this for the oil pan bolts. I'm doing it for the cam cover bolts and pretty much most of the bolts that I'm not replacing because I don't want to be stripping bolts because it's a huge pain. So I'm gonna get all these done. And then we got the cam cover getting painted up real quick. Just put another couple coats on it. It's already been silver. Um, and then we can start cleaning up the cams, pulling off the cam gears, and do a final cleanup of the top of the head. Put the lifters back in, lube everything up, and should be able to get those cams in tonight. So that's the goal. And then we're also gonna start cleaning out the rest of the oil pan. You can see you got some of this like dust in it from the cleaner that I gotta get out and finish cleaning up a couple spots and we can let that dry overnight and get it painted and hopefully get that on tomorrow which is Saturday. We got the lifters back in. This is a solid lifter head. It's actually an N head. It's an 850 head but I converted it over to solid lifters. I covered that in another video so I'm not really going to go over it but um, since these are solid lifters they do have to go back in the same bore that they came out of. So of course before I took them out I labeled them all and then I put them in this container. Um, so they wouldn't get dirty and basically I wiped them down and oiled them and then they went right to their bores nice and easily So we're not going to check valve clearance or I'm sorry valve lash um, Because we just did it last year, you know, this has 2,000 miles on it I doubt anything changed and it ran perfect and the engine wasn't noisy. So we're gonna leave it alone um, and We're gonna finish cleaning up this surface. Um, I got some of the holes that looked kind of crusty, I got them um, uh, chased. I got all the bolts chased. Um, we're just waiting for that cam cover to dry. And we're gonna clean off the cams, pull the gears off, pull the uh, cam sensor wheel off, get all that cleaned up, and we can get rocking on this thing soon. I'm doing a dry run installation of the cam cover with no cams or sealant or o-rings or anything because there's always every this head's been torqued or this cam cover has been torqued probably like 15 times this is the original head from the original motor like it's been torqued so many times and there's always one or two bolts 
that freaking strip when I'm installing this. This one stripped and this one stripped on the dry run. And I mean, yeah, you can still do a Healy coil with um, the cam cover uh, on. You can still drill through it. I, I've done it before on one of these somewhere, a couple of them. But I'd rather just do a dry run, figure out the ones that are screwed up, fix them now, and that's going to give me the best possible chance of not stripping any when I go to torque it officially. And you can see I also painted the cam cover and it looks freaking awesome. So I'm probably going to pull this off. I'm going to fix those two. And then I might do one more dry run or I might not. I might just go for it. I don't know. It's, it's always hit or miss. Um, but we're going to use the official Volvo tool to actually like clamp this down so that we can... Uh, not use those bolts to pull it down because I think using those bolts to pull it down um, ends up damaging the aluminum thread. So we'll get those two fixed. We'll get them Healy coiled. Fortunately, I just bought a new Healy coil kit and we will, I guess, do the full install. All five of our O-rings. We got everything all cleaned off. We got the uh, journals and the lifters all lubed up. We got our cams in, remember, on the intake cam. You want it above the center line, and on the exhaust cam, you want it below the center line. We also have our crank pulley is set to Volvo TDC down here because we're going to set these up initially um, like Volvo does, and then we'll find adjust them with the degree wheel and the um, dial gauge indicator. We have our cam cover lubed and also sealant. You only put the sealant on the cam cover. You don't put it on the head because if you put it on the head, Basically, you're going to have sealant on the head side where these uh, oil channels are. And then sealant's basically going to get all into here and everything, uh, not dried sealant. So you don't want that to happen. And I'm going to double check everything, make sure we're good. We're going to put that on and then we'll try putting this tool in. Um, cam cover tightening tool in, basically you thread it on the two ends um, into the spark hole, spark plug hole socket holes thread these down all the way and then you evenly turn these and it's actually really easy to putting this thing down. Um, so I think I'm going to throw things on the tripod and we're just going to put this down all the way and start torquing bolts and hopefully have a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool, um, time lapse. out really well we got one casualty this guy is stripped so I'm gonna pull it out coil it and you can coil it with it on it does make it a little bit easier because you don't have to worry about shavings getting anywhere but yeah that tool worked out really awesome 50 bucks on Amazon next day delivery can't beat it I will always use it again because it just made uh, I nicked up my paint no oh. anyway Made life a lot easier, to be honest. And let's see, we got sealant oozing out all the way around. So we're looking good, again. Intake is above the center line. Exhaust is below the center line. She's on TDC, we got our sealant, it's lubed. We got all five of our O-rings. We're done with the cam cover. Well, almost done. We gotta pull this one out and Healy coil that real fast. So let's get that done healy coil with the cover on so what you got to do is you really got to drill it out big so i drilled it out to 
What's that? 23 64ths or whatever that is. And the drill bit for the tap is only 9 30 seconds. So you gotta go up like four or five sizes just so A, you can get the tap through here. And so you can get the actual Healy coil through here without having to tap this whole thing. But yeah, it went in fine. Um, once this is big enough, the tap slides in and then it just taps this portion and then the Healy coil slides down and we'll just thread into this portion. You can get a bolt in it, no problem. So we got all the bolts in, they're all torqued and oh man, it's like every time I put this together, it just gets more and more frustrating because of how used these threads are. I think next time this engine comes apart, I'm Healy coiling the entire thing because like steel bolts and aluminum, it's just like, it's such a silly idea. Like the aluminum always gets destroyed, but it's in. I'm gonna go through, double check them all one more time and I might put a little dab of silicone or RTV or something here. I don't think I'm gonna need it because you can see it, it it's squeezing through, but just just as an extra precaution. The cam seals are in, obviously Vava OEM. This socket set, like this press and pull socket set is the best thing I ever bought because you can use it to put in seals, right? And it's like, it's awesome, it's awesome. Like 90 bucks, I've used this thing like dozens of times now, I've used it so many times. Front seals, perfect. Like it's, there's so many uses for it. If you don't have one of these, just pick them up. They're like 90 bucks on eBay. It's called like a, a socket uh, press and pull kit. And there's just so many uses for it. It's awesome. OEM cam seals are in. These things are not cheap. They're like 30 bucks each, but it's the best stuff. So that's what we run. We run the best stuff because we don't want to have silly problems like cam seal leaks because we cheaped out on parts. So we're ready to time this thing up or at least put the belt on and then we can crank it over to top dead center on cylinder three, which we got marked somewhere right here. And now we can start setting the cam timing. So start playing around with that. Put the belt on, I tightened the gears, I tensioned it a little bit and I turned it around a couple of times to make sure there was no piston to valve contact. Again, we just used the Volvo timing method. So we used the mark down here by the oil pump and we used intake above, exhaust below. So now what we can actually do is we will uh, turn the flywheel over, or sorry, the crank pulley over to cylinder three top dead center. And we're gonna make sure that the intake cams, kind of hard to see, make sure that the intake cams are um, going on the intake phase and these are on exiting the exhaust phase. And then we can set up our timing and we're gonna play around with that. It's getting pretty laid out. So I might just play around this a little bit and call it quits. It's late on Friday night. And then maybe resume this Saturday and get this thing timed and ready to rock and roll. So I'm working on the uh, cam timing. Basically I got my dial gauge indicator put on the lifter. We got the engine at true top dead center on cylinder three. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate the engine backwards until this gauge stops moving. And then I'm gonna zero this gauge out and I'm gonna rotate it until um, top dead center in three and I'm gonna see how close I am um, from using the Volvo marks at the rear and using the Volvo setup method. So you can see it's starting to move. We want to go to about 100 and we take this off and look down here. You can see our, we're targeting 2.5 millimeters of lift at true top dead center. And you can see that puts our mark pretty close. It's a little bit off. Uh, maybe this slipped off a little bit. Regardless, the next step we're going to do is we're going to um, turn it back until that gauge stops moving and there's no lift on the valve. We'll take the belt off. We'll make sure this is at true top dead center and then uh, that this lines up with that. And then we can set our um, cam timing uh, via lifted TDC. We're gonna go with 100 thousands on the intake and 80 thousands on the exhaust. That's 2.5 millimeters and 2.0 millimeters of lift at true top dead center. So we're gonna do that real quick and then the engine will be timed. It's a pretty straightforward procedure. I've done it a bunch of times. I've covered it in other videos, so I'm not gonna go over, over it a whole bunch, but I'll do a little, little brief uh, explanation on it. Got the cams all timed. To double check it, basically what I do 
is I will get this. So we want a hundred uh, thousandths on the intake. I already checked the exhaust, but what I'll do is I'll rotate it backwards until we stop getting any lift. So right about here, I'll zero this out. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the crank until we get a hundred um, thousandths inches of lift. because you don't want to overshoot this and then we'll get our little checking tool and we want to make sure this should be exactly at top dead center and as you can see it is pretty darn close about as close as we're going to get it basically the top of this has to be lined up with the top of this gold mark and the top of this has to be lined up with the top of this cam cover is how i marked it and you can see it's like spot on. So that means that's good. That means our cam timing set. We have our tensioner set. We have these torqued. We have this torqued, 15 foot pounds, 18 foot pounds. So everything is good to go in the timing department. I'm gonna turn the engine. I will already turn the engine over a couple times to make sure there was no piston to valve clearance issues and I didn't detect any. Um, I did notice that before my true TDC mark was actually a little bit too advanced. So that was causing the cams to be, I guess, a little too um, retarded. And basically what that would cause is maybe slightly uh, laggier spool up since uh, retarding the cams will move the power band up in the RPM. So we might actually pick up maybe 100 RPMs of spool from getting this a lot more accurate now by using the degree wheel. So pretty happy about that. So we're done timing. And the next step I wanna do is I wanna drill out the uh, oil return. This is the RNC oil return. You can see I started drilling it a little bit, but I'm gonna drill this out, tap it with one half N, uh, MPT, and then after that's done, we can clean all that out and put the oil pan on, because the only reason I haven't put the oil pan on yet is because I wanna make sure to clean all the shavings out of this. I'm also clean out the bottom a little bit, and we're chugging along on this thing. I'm pretty happy. We are very close. So let's get this uh, timing all finalized, everything double checked again, and. We're ready to rock and roll. You can see KM Cams does a pretty good job of um, setting them up for the OEM timing method. You can see intake above, exhaust below, and it's perfectly parallel. And it might be hard to see without a flashlight, but I do have this lined up. You can see that little timing mark on the oil pump lined up with the one on the crank sprocket. So very confident this thing is timed absolutely perfectly and definitely a lot more accurate than before. So hopefully we pick up some spool from fixing our timing up a little bit. Um, yeah. So there is a method to the madness of drilling out this oil port. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill out a center hole. That's the exact um, same inner diameter as one half NPT. It's about 12 millimeters, so about half an inch. Um, because if you drill this out too big, actually under here, you can see there's this little channel and you don't want to like cut onto the other side of this channel. So I'm going to drill the center out to the inner diameter of this, and then we'll drill halfway down with the big 11 16 bit for um, tapping one half MPT. Um, we'll basically just tap it down, uh, not all the way, so that way we don't actually break through on this uh, little baffle thing here. To drill, I was feeling more and more confident of drilling it out completely with the 11 16 bit, and you can see it worked out perfect. You can see there's a little bit on these two edges, but that hole is a lot bigger than that small 12 millimeter uh, hole I had before. And you can see that's a nice big oil drain. That's perfect. So we're going to tap this, get it all cleaned out, and uh, we can start working on the oil pan. To the dry run of the oil pan, all the bolts torqued up to 18 pound feet. So pretty happy on that. So I think it's about time to get this permanently installed. And we'll get the sealant on it, get the O-rings in, get the pickup pipe, and we should be ready to rock. Volvo OEM O-ring kit. And I replaced the O-ring here and here. The pan is completely cleaned out. Um, and I also, that also came with the O-rings that you need for the block. So you need, this one is for the oil pickup. Sorry, this one's for the oil pickup. And then these two are for um, these two spots right here. It actually comes with this third one, but you don't need this one. This one's actually, you can see it's smaller. 
you don't need this one. Just pick the ones that fit inside of the bores. So you can see that one fits there and that one fits there. And um, yeah, we're gonna do one final cleanup of the surface. We're gonna get the pickup in. We're gonna get uh, the sealant on the oil pan. And I also want to, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the oil pan. So let's get to it. And then there's a special procedure that you need to follow to torque it. Okay, so the official Vadas procedure or Vita dice procedure is one, two, three, four. You tighten these to three newton meters and then you tighten these outer ones to, uh, I believe it was 30 and then 48. And then the rest you just tighten to about uh, 20, 20 newton meters. So we're gonna get that done. You also are only gonna put the sealant on the uh, oil pan side. Don't put it on the block side. I used to put it on the block side, but you're not supposed to do that. And then we're gonna put in the O-rings and use some uh, assembly lube to make sure that they stay in there. So we got our oil pickup in, we got our O-ring, we got our two bolts torqued to 18 pound feet. So those are in, we got this all cleaned out too. There was a little bit of like old sealant in there. So I got all that cleaned out. We're gonna hit the deck. Uh, surface one more time with some brake clean, uh, clean the oil pan surface, and then I'll throw this on the tripod and we'll torque her up and pray to God that none of the bolts strip. Fava wants you to tighten these to uh, 48 newton meters, which is ridiculous. That's definitely gonna freaking destroy these threads. Um, I tried starting to tighten it and I started feeling them kind of getting a little bit loose. So I said, screw it. I'm gonna torque them all to 18. So they're all to 18. Um, there was like a couple of bolts like this one and this one that started getting a little loose. So I'm just gonna throw a little bit of silicone on the edge. I mean, <clears throat> They're at least 15 pound feet and uh, all the, the pink stuff was oozing out. So just as a precaution, um, I think that one too, I got to double check that. It's like just getting to 18, but it's like if I just push it a little bit too much, I think it's going to crack the threads. So I'm going to leave them alone. There's just like two or three bolts. Everything else is torqued down. You can see sealant starting to squeeze out. So that thing's definitely on. Just gonna go through, clean everything up, and we're done with the oil pan. So yeah, I'm just about done putting the engine back together. I got the accessory bracket on, I got that painted. I got the uh, torque mount bracket over here, repaint it, and I got that on. Um, I just need to finish up cleaning the accessory rack. And then after that, I can throw this on the subframe with the uh, transmission, probably just the bell housing. And we can start mocking up the clutch when that comes in and we can start mocking up the uh, turbo drain to our new port that we drilled. Um, I switched this from a straight to a 45 so that it wouldn't hit the angle gear. This is just a, uh, another crankcase ventilation port. We can get the water pipe on. I got a new turbo feed line because my old one was getting pretty, pretty nasty. I forgot it at home, so I can't show that. But yes, and our transmission bracket is almost done. We're gonna be test fitting that soon. So, very close on the engine, just waiting on the transmission. Uh, well, it's just waiting on the clutch and the quaif to be done, um, for that to be done machining. We got our angle gear. We just need to basically reset up. Um, I have some extra shims I'm gonna take to the machine shop. I'm gonna have them shave them down to about one millimeter, and then we can fine tune the backlash from there. The backlash is a little bit tight with this new gear set, 
It's about uh, three or four thousandths, but the pinion depth is perfect. We got that shimmed all perfectly. We got to order new bolts, order the lubrication system, and we're gonna be done with that. And then we can get that on the transmission, get the transmission on the engine, get everything on the subframe, and just finalize everything. And once that's done, we can get the subframe back in the car and maybe fire up the engine. And once the engine's running, put in the rear and get all that situated. We're just waiting on two more bushings for there. So again, very close and we're gonna be uh, getting this thing done pretty soon. I got a ton done this week, which is awesome. I got all this stuff done. I got a couple small things to, to get done and then you gotta order some other big parts like the prop shaft and right axle. And we'll get to all that soon, but we're getting there guys. I also ended up deciding to paint the hood just rattle canned it. I mean, it came out pretty good. It's hard to tell on camera if it came out good or not. There's a couple streaks here and there, but I mean, it's just one coat. It's something to just throw some color on it and complement the rest of the engine bay. Not bad. I just used the Duplicolor engine ceramic that I used on my engine block. I figured that would be the best thing to Hold up to the heat and yeah, this engine bay is looking awesome. Show car, man. Race car and show car. I mean, the hood came out, came out okay. It's nothing crazy. I'm not gonna go crazy painting the hood because it's a hood on the inside of the engine bay. Um, I gotta touch up some of these areas. You can see some overspray from the primer. This I'm gonna do some pour 15 on because there was a little bit of rust in this area. So we're definitely gonna pour 15 that and get that all cleaned up. Other than that, I didn't get any overspray anywhere. I put down some tarping, of course. It was kind of hard spray painting in here, but I mean, everything's covered. And I had the fan either sucking it all out, depending on which side I was, or just blowing it all over here. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Pretty happy with it. Not too crazy on the, you know, cosmetic side of things. I like stuff to look nice, obviously, but I don't go too crazy over it. I'm happy with it.